All right, so here I am tonight, clutching my Bridget's Cross after that wild storm we had last night. So about you, but I've never heard thunder so loud in all my life. I thought the roof was going to blow clean off. Everyone around here is talking about it. The man working on my car told me that he'd been over in New York lately and he'd been there witnessing a terrible storm that obviously was newsworthy enough to make it to the papers. But then he turned to me and he said, sure paled in comparison to the storm we had here last night. Well, I had to laugh. I said, well, only in Ireland would we ever be competing with New York over who is the biggest storms. But it did get me thinking about how much we've always feared and respected lightning and some of the mad stories we've told about it over the years. You see, lightning has always been a thing of terror in Irish folklore. But we've also had our own ways of keeping it at arm's length. So take the May bush, for example, on the evening before Bialtana. People had cut a bush and they'd decorated with flowers and ribbons and they'd put it outside their house and it set it on fire. And that the idea of that was that this charm would keep lightning away for a whole year. And below in Galway, people still visit holy wells, like St. Carol's Well. And I think they go there in the middle of June and they take some holy water from it. And the idea of that is to protect the homes from lightning. So himself and a whole bunch of other saints like Colm Kale and James and others promised their own people from that parish that they wouldn't be harmed by the likes of lightning. And people have been banking on that for generations. So, as I say, that's gone on with several saints. But never mind the rituals, there are some proper stories about lightning that'll make your hair stand on end. So for though, for though, there was a young fella whose identity has since been lost to time. And on the day he was born, it was foretold that he would be struck down by lightning on a particular day in his life. Now, this wasn't told by any old rando coming about the place, but by a schoolmaster. And, and that was back in the time of hedge school. So he would travel about quite a bit, dropping wisdom and advice as he went. Anyway, this fella's father, uh, obviously didn't want to take any chances and he built a kind of a tunnel or a cave or a dungeon deep into a rock. Uh, some say it was even lined with cement and all of this was to keep his son safe when the fateful day finally came. Anyway, the day finally arrived and this lad wasn't having any of it. He'd been away studying to be a priest and of course in his stubbornness, he refused to hide away underground. He had the audacity to go up and face it up on the hill, head on. And he reckoned that if lightning was going to get him, he'd never outrun his feet. So he decided to stand his ground and take it like a man. According to himself, this was God's decision and it wasn't for him to intervene. So anyway, the lightning did come, as predicted, but it actually didn't hit him. Instead, it blasted the tunnel that his father had built and completely wrecked it. But there he was, standing out in the field and not a scratch on him. Now, you might say it was divine intervention, but I don't know if I think I would describe it more to stubbornness. Would you? Anyway, that's nothing. Wait until you hear about the man who saw six strange men emerge from a bolt of lightning. So, okay, picture this. There's this builder out on the beach and he was gathering sand for the next job with his trusty pony and trap that he had with him. Now, the sky suddenly turned a kind of a red colour and before he knew it, there was a crack of thunder and a flash of lightning and it knocked him flat on his face 
Now, when he comes around, he sees his poor old pony lying dead next to the cart. But just as he's trying to gather himself, he sees a fiery blue column of light out over the sea. And from that light, six figures emerge. Now, they're dressed in these kind of flowing, colourful dresses. No, they were robes, uh, like something straight out of the Bible. Long beards, you know the, you know the crack. Holy faces. They looked more like something out of a religious book than real people. Anyway, one of them walks over to the fella and he sa- takes him by the hand and he says to him, "Well, a store. What happened to you?" And the man, of course, still dazed, said that he was struck by lightning and that his pony was dead. Well, your man just says, No, be Borha, don't be worried. And he walks over, strolls over to the pony. And he stoops down, takes the pony by the head. And just like that, the pony just shakes himself off and stands up right as rain. Then these guys, these mysterious men, they just, as suddenly as they appeared, walk back towards the sea and disappear off into the fading light. Well, the poor man's left standing there, only alive, and with the most unbelievable story you could ever imagine. So those figures, they might have been angels, they might have been fairies or saints or something else altogether, but they were good, kind men, and they left a story to last a lifetime. Now, this particular storyteller knew that people would never believe him, so he'd always end up Uh, beginning to recall his story by saying well I have a story about lightning and I don't care if you believe it or not and that surely is a sign that he had to have been telling the truth so anyway there you have it a few stories to keep in mind the next time the skies start flashing and rumbling so whether it's a St. Bridget's Cross or a Maybush or a bit of holy water or just sheer bravery we've got plenty of ways to face the storm and you know what? Maybe the, maybe your man who's fixing my car actually had a point. Our storms might just have a bit of a bite to them, a bit more than even New York. Anyway, I better get off to bed now, and um, I'll be keeping my Bridget's Cross close tonight, just in case. And if any storm brings another good story, I'll be sure to tell you all about it. So, be Hawaii. Good night. Mind yourselves.